our ancestors underestimated the home. Welcome to Marivado. The Tamau ruthlessly worked viciously and today they control the whole earth. With a stroke of a pen, a nuclear attack or a deliberate vaccination, they have the power now in their hands to wipe out all of us and send us off this planet into oblivion. It is imperative that we survive. Yet the majority of Bantu Negroes lap these falsities as truth. Europeans, Arabs or Asians go ahead and boast that they were the civilizers of the earth, civilizers of Hamid and India. And out of that, they derive a form of self esteem. Worst of all, it is clear that the more educated the Muntu, the stronger is his or her denial of his or her history, religion, logic, institutions, and even race. Why? My religion is Hamitic Ubuntu Maati consciousness, is my spirituality. I am a Kamitician. Welcome to Marifado, our inheritance. Let's discuss this topic and let us learn a few lessons. The inquiry of why the ancient Africans had a concretized smug, almost a shocking racist opinion of other races, specifically Europeans, conjures up wild responses from Egyptologists. Added to this is the quick and pathetic explanation when an image like this is shown, they are quick to point out that Pharaoh Scorpion was oppressing the black people, Negroes like that, forgetting that he looks exactly the same as a Muntu and is wearing the crown of a Muntu. So this was a deliberate fight and war amongst the tribes. At the same time, when an image like this is floated, where the Asiatic is under the foot of the pharaoh, they are silent and they don't want to talk about it. Could this be the evidence that our wise ancestors in Hamid disliked Europeans the most and that the European elites, they know this, hence their approach and attitude towards digging up our ancestors and displaying them in glass casket and burning their bodies and even claiming that they descended from them. It gets serious when evidence shows that the popular image of ancient Egyptian four races of men has uh, been seriously tempered with. And it is now a fake. This is the image that has been heavily doctored. Who tempered with it? Why was it restored to the point where it is now different from the original? Why do Egyptologists selectively doubt Champollion's explanations of what he saw when he went into Babel el Meluk? The last question is one that must involve all of us if we are awakened Bantus. What do we learn from all this? Did the ancient Egyptians view Europeans in very bad light? This is the image from the tomb of Sutu One, and this is the rendering that was done by the Frenchman. Heinrich von Minutoli, 1820. See, this is a Libyan. And see, this is a Muntu. This is an Asiatic. And also, this is a Muntu. He want to call this Egyptian and say it's different color. These are the four races of mankind as known in the Book of Gates, as known by our ancestors. And this is the depiction of the artist. But there is a complete, total obliteration of the true representation of the proper and correct image in ancient history. This is the image and someone you can see clearly has dubbed that and tried to restore it and destroyed an image that was here. Who was there? Let us look at uh, that. This is how the ancient Hamites in ancient Africa viewed themselves. This is a painting from the tomb of Ramses, Ramses III, 1200 years BCE. Capture that. It shows that the Egyptians saw themselves as blacks and painted themselves as such without possible confusion with Indo-Europeans, Caucasoids, or so-called Semites. It is 
a representation of the races in their most minute differences, which ensures the accuracy of the colors throughout their entire history. The Egyptians never entertained the fantasy of portraying themselves by types B or D. This is an ancient Hamitian, and this is uh, the Indo-European whom we are dealing with today, and this is the other Mutu in Africa, and this is the so-called Semite. You can see with the nose, and you can see with that. So that puts everything clear. So the example of lying by men's handwork, so-called restoration, is here. And this was uh, done by Henry von Minutoli, 1820. Four peoples of the world, a Libyan, a Nubian, an Asiatic, and an Egyptian, an artistic rendering. Right? But you can notice straightforward that it is not depicting what is found here. The actual tomb a painting. It's completely different. Let's continue to show that. The shocking state of Europeans a few millennia ago. Here is how Egyptians depicted white people in the words of Champollion. Francis Champollion was the scholar credited with deciphering the hieroglyphics. Major nature, which is defined as the language of the gods, which was written on the Rosetta Stone. The information that he was said to have unraveled about the origins and the true history of the Tamahu, which literally translate into the words created white people, devastated him and he wrote about what he found in the letter to his brother, which is shown, which we shall show here some of the excerpts. The Tamahu is the European, said Champollion. Champollion affirmed this in that letter. So it's very, very clear about that. There it is, his overview. And this is the tomb of Sutu I, uh, Book of Gates, 4th Division, 5th hour. Uh, exactly, you can see that. Uh, and uh, there is an overview that he gives here. And we learn at the same time, this Champollion, the great geographical or ethnographic divisions established during that early epoch. Men led by Horesu, this is Horesu, the shepherd of the peoples belong to the four distinct families. The first, the closest to the divinity or the god, has a dark red color. Yeah. A well proportioned body, kind face, nose slightly aquiline, long braided hair, and is dressed in white. The legends designate this species as Retenu Rume. Man. This is band word for men. The race of men per excellency. Rume. There can be no uncertainty about the racial identity of the man who comes next. So there were four in each row, four in each row, and so forth. All. Right? See that? He belongs to the black race. The general designation was Nahas or Nehuso. Finally, the last one is what we call flesh colored, a white skin of the most delicate shade, a nose straight or slightly edged, blue eyes, blonde or reddish beard, tall stature, and very slender, clad in hairy oak skin. A veritable savage, tattooed. On various parts of his body, he is called Tamahu. This is Champollion who is writing that. There is the Tamahu. There are all the tattoos around his body. But you can see that the, he looks more like a Muntu. How did the ancient Egyptians view Europeans? Clearly, is the final, the last one, is called the Tamahu of flesh colored. Hey, you can see the hair has different. So he goes on to say, and I am ashamed to say so, since our race is the last and the most savage in the series. Europeans who in those remote epochs frankly did not cut too fine a figure in the world. In this category, we must include all blondes and other white skinned people living, not only in Europe but also in Asia, 
as well. They are starting point. Now, the debate has gone on whether the Tamahu were Libyans or they were Europeans. In many forums, this debate has gone on, but specifically in Egypt search forums, there is a lot of details and interesting information. Tamahu was Champollion inserting his own race among us the elites of Bantus or not? There is something, there is a lot of information that we need to deal with and classify. The Tamau is clearly defined as European by the ancient, who are clearly depicted with white skin and body tattoos, many being of Germanic races, Goth and Scythian. Yet we find that there is Tamau here in the west of the Nile, right into Africa. And there is Refu or Rebu or Rebai. And the Tehenu is the region that they lived in. And Amit is the west of the great river Ahapki. So we know now clearly that here in the north of Africa, here, Meshweshwe, Meshweshwe, you know, Meshweshwe in Lesotho. So there were people of our own about to race there. Now, it is clear that the Tamahu were our own brothers and sisters who migrated and moved from here when the Sahara was still lushy and green and uh, settled in North Africa along the uh, ocean here. There are so many things here that we could add, but we need to move on and finish uh, our, our video now. So, these battles here in North Africa, the Negroes lived in a place called Tehenu, and they were mixed up with the Europeans. Hence, our ancestors in Hamid, in Mubge and Kush had a very low opinion of uh, these uh, folks. Are the sea people same as uh, the Tamahu? These are the sea people. On uh, Ramasas third table of nations, we understand that the term Tehenu, which we've shown there, was a generic term applied to the Libyans. Shown there, here, there, all right? Tehenu, there is the term there. In North Africa, who by this time were mixed with the Tamahu people, from where we get the descendants of the Gushians and the people of the sea, Indo-Europeans, Tamahu. So these are what we would call Makaradi. In conclusion, therefore, the biggest lesson out of all this and many other lessons is clearly that our ancestors underestimated the Tamau. Within a May 1688 years, the Tamau are now in charge of the whole earth with massive power. With one stroke of a pen, a nuclear attack, or a deliberate vaccination, we, the descendants of the oldest and most civilized people on earth, may become extinct in a flash. It is imperative we survive. To learn more on possible survival tactics, send us an email on join at marifado.com. Let us stop underestimating the Tamahu and adopt a survival tactic. Subscribe to our channel, Hamid Iburu Ethics. It's Priya by LM Dumizulu. Saying, till we meet again, beware of the programs of the Tamahu. Edupe, Siabonga, Tatenda, Henkos.